Kenneth Williams was best known for the zany and usually risque characters he played in countless carry-on films. In all, he starred in 22 of them. His distinctive voice, his flaring nostrils and arched eyebrows made him instantly recognisable everywhere he appeared. He first discovered the talent for mimicry at school and carried on with it as a soldier, entertaining the troops in World War II. Margaret Gilmore has been looking back at the career of one of Britain's best-loved comedians. Kenneth Williams, the comedian who'd become an institution. Raconteur, writer, actor, star of film, of radio and of television. Good evening. <laughs> what do you want? I'm your roommate. Oh, no, you're not. Come on, come on. Stop Mr. Bell. He chose to nice expand this comic persona, this comic side of his nature. He made himself what we all know as Kenneth Williams. He grew into this comic persona and a comic. He was a funny man. He made himself so and thank God for that. It is conceivable that there were lots of other parts that he could have played later on had he found a, a strong enough director and had he had a strong enough desire to do it himself. I'm not quite sure how seriously he took acting uh, when he was doing it himself. Uh, I think that it was effortless in a way for him to be funny and to do his characters. I never worked with him as, as an actor, but uh, I have a suspicion that uh, he thought all sorts of other things in life were perhaps more important. Something he always took seriously were his roots. Kenneth Williams was born in the East End. This was and still is a poor area of London. No bathroom, of course. We had a tin tub which used to hang on the scullery door. He was an observer and had the knack of seeing the comical, even the ridiculous, in things. Cromer Houses, where I came to live when I was very young. And from that window where you can see the red geraniums, I used to throw flower pots onto the heads of the unsuspecting passers-by. And one of them happened to be Florrie Plume, who was a great friend of my mother's. And she said afterwards, it was the only wear in that thick felt hat that saved me from a terrible injury from your boy. Oh, he was a tremendous actor. I think he was, the problem was that he was an even better raconteur and personality. It's a little, I suppose it's a little like uh, the problems that face somebody like Peter Ustinov. You know, people always want to hear them doing 89 voices and being very, being very funny. His style was perfect for the boisterous carry-on films. The 22 he starred in were to bring him box office success and turn him into a household name. Now, really, let's see those chests come out and fling and in and fling and in and fling. <laughs> oh, oh. <laughs> oh, matron, take them away. Despite his outrageous comedy, Kenneth Williams was an intense and witty man. For 21 years, this side of him perhaps came out best in the radio quiz Just a Minute, where he perfected the art of interruption. mixture of Australia... Uh, Kenneth Williams is just... Deviation, you couldn't possibly get a kangaroo into a bucket. <laughs> Ever versatile and already established as actor and writer, in 1980, he made his debut as a director with a production of his friend Joe Orton's play, Loot. Right, OK. Right. From the same place? Yeah, roughly. Mm. His appeal was wide. He was always in demand on chat shows, but in 1986, he reversed roles by standing in as host of the Terry Wogan show. I was surprised when they asked me to do this show. I was, I was surprised. Not that I hide my light under a bushel. I don't want to think that. I used to go around with a candelabra until Liberace finished it. No. But what of the man behind the success? Kenneth Williams was a bachelor and lived alone. He once said he couldn't comment on his sexual conquests because he didn't have any. Even his friends found it difficult to fathom what lay behind the lively public image. He was a very private person. That uh, cell-like flat uh, into which I only strayed once suggested that uh, he was getting out of life probably what he felt that he wanted. Whether that made him happy or not, I'm not sure. I'm very privileged that I was a mate of his because a lot of people wanted to be his mate and he got all these invitations to go to parties and that because he was a great raconteur and he made everybody laugh. But he didn't. He chose them very carefully. So. Tonight, tributes have been flooding in for the actor with the sharp tongue and shrill voice who captivated thousands with his comedy, but who this morning died alone.
Margaret Gilmore reporting, and the Daily Mirror leads with the news of the death of a man it calls a tragic, lonely genius. The son, too, Carry On Kenneth, dies after op scare.